Hey, it is good morning for us. I'm Steve Rode, and this is Damon Day. Say hey, Damon. This is take number two <laughs> <laughs> of the wonderful intro for the Penny Stupid podcast. We're back again trying to do these more regularly to give you kind of real-time updates about what side hustling is really like. So, Damon, let me start off with an online arbitrage update. It is actually been challenging trying to find really good buys uh, to give me the return on investment that I'm looking for. I I don't want to get into the lowering my return on investment target too much because then you're putting more money out there at risk, hoping to get a smaller return. So yesterday I was able to purchase $800 worth of goods that should return me a $641 profit. And the retail price on all those should be about $1,800. So that was pretty good. Now, here's another consideration. Retail arbitrage or online arbitrage is full of so many landmines, potholes, pitfalls, whatever other thing you can fall in or kill yourself on. Because, you know, now we're talking in the economy about a recession. And in in a recession, people are going to pull back spending on discretionary items. On one hand, you hear people talking about the way you make a killing is to find a good product and then buy the shit out of it so you've got lots of it at a low price and you can make a lot of money. Yeah, but if it's something that's discretionary and people don't need to spend on and the economy tanks, you're going to end up with a garage, a basement, a warehouse (laughs) full of stuff you can't move, and that's not any good either. So yeah. it, it it is it's a tight wire act. It's a balancing act between what do I buy now? I've kind of changed my focus. I I am only looking at things that I think are required or items that I think that people will purchase. And <laughs> this might surprise you, uh, but one of the things that I'm focusing on right now are games and toys because. Telling kids no is not something that parents really ex- excel at, right? You agree? <laughs> so, so you're betting on Gen Z to be soft. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm betting on. Uh, okay. And other things that are required and not not real, you know, sexy. Uh, I'm just not one of those guys that's into buying clothes and shoes and things like that. I, I don't want to deal with all those returns. So the key is trying to find products and sources where you can make enough money, manage your risk, spread your risk out, and yet still be able to purchase products, uh, have enough to sell. So uh, a few videos ago, we were talking about trying to hit half mil in profit by the end of the year. Are you you starting to want to roll that back a little? Are you starting to get over your skis? (laughs) Look, I'm always willing to roll that back because, (laughs) here's the big because, is because uh, I have no pride in making bad decisions trying to hit an artificial target. Now, that's my goal, and I, I would love to hit it, but life is a fluid event, and it changes day to day, and whether the economy is good or bad or whatever, uh, I don't have any control over all that. So it will be a ride and we'll just have to see at the end of the year. Well, like I said, even if you fall short of half a million, your first year trying this out, even if you fall significantly short of it, it's still going to be success. You know, even if you make a hundred thousand, is that going to be a, a failure? I don't well, think so. <laughs> look, I, you know, in my third month, uh, last month, I made three grand in profit. So for me, I think that's pretty good. Now, yeah. you know, you look at all the things that I purchased yesterday. If all of those sold on one day and uh, everything went well, I would make $641 in profit. And for most of your driving days, you know, that's it beats or equals what you've done. Hey, on, the guy next mm-hmm. to me is car is smoking, too. So I feel better. Yeah, okay. I just noticed. <laughs> da- Damon's talking. Anyway, he's charging his no. Tesla right now. And when he plugs it in, it starts to, a little vapor comes off of it. So it's not like his car's on fire. It, it looks right? like the car's on fire. But, but yeah. he calls it a little vapor. I was panicking a little bit. But it only happens when it's rainy and cold out. So yeah. the it's vapor the theory, 
Well, let's just we'll go with that because now yeah. finally I I noticed somebody next to me. It's the first time I've seen somebody else doing that. So yeah. either both of us are on fire, or <laughs> we're both we're both just vaping Teslas. Yeah, vaping Teslas. Yeah, yeah put some flavor like, on that. Like dueling banjos. So uh, sourcing has got to be the number one thing. Trying to find good products to sell. That's how I spend most of my time searching for things. And I'm just not at the point where, you know, I want to buy a thousand of anything and get, as I always call it from the uh, multi-level marketing world, garage qualified, you know, with a whole bunch of stuff in the garage, I'll never be able to move. I, that's not, that's not me. Yeah. Now, that might be your approach when you start doing this because it's a new year, right? And sometime soon you're going to start online arbitrage and get you invested in doing this. Yeah. That sounds more like my personality. Yeah. Oh, less rolling work and the more dice. Hope. Less work and more hope. Like, let's just take all the money, put it in this one product. We don't have to look at any more products, and we'll just see if it goes. Yeah, we'll put it all in red. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? And before we start talking about your experience this weekend with Rideshare, let me just and please invite everyone to like the video, subscribe, and the comments have been coming in. I've really been enjoying them. Damon has been the number one guy answering them. So if you uh, see a comment with some witty repartee, uh, that's Damon answering those comments. But uh, yeah, please give us a like. Our subscriber count, we're not like breaking 2 million or anything, but I've been uh, really impressed how many people are following the journey, the side hustle journey, and enjoying what at least you have to say. Yeah, well, I, I think it's going to be good. I think we got a good little thing here where, you know, I'm doing the things that people can go out and do right now for no money and just go make money tomorrow. And then you're kind of focusing on some of that, but mainly more things of once you have some money, here's some ideas that you can do um, to, to grow it so you're not trading time for dollars. And I think especially with the re recession coming, um, who knows how big it's going to be or how small it's going to be, um, there's no shortage of people that, would like to get some ideas. And I was, in fact, I was, Ooh, the sun just got really bright. In my, <laughs> look at, it's right in my eye. Look at, it's like the cloud just moves all bam. <laughs> Shit. There we go. <laughs> Men in black style. So, uh, what the hell was I talking about? Oh yeah. So here's no, the thing about the economy. Uh, and I, I bet you'll agree with economy, me. On stupid. Yeah. Um, if you, whether it's something that we have written or I've written on my website, getoutofdebt.org, or you've read in the newspaper, heard on the news, or whatever echo chamber the channel that you listen to, there are two predictions about the economy. It's going to get really, really bad, or it's going to be just absolutely fine. And the answer to both of those is, yeah, uh, nobody knows what the future is going to bring. So you have to hedge your bets about how much risk you're going to take. Now, like, with the uh, ride share and delivery and things that Damon is doing, you probably already have a car and that's something that you're going to have. So you can get into that and use your car and make money. And that's something you can do today. And then we're going to take the money that Damon makes and we're going to use it in online and retail arbitrage, trying to uh, multiply it and help make even more money each month. Yeah. And, and that's just, you know, one of the things that we're trying right now. I mean, the goal is to just keep trying new things. So it's not just, you're only going to be doing online arbitrage, you know, for the next year, there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to get into. In fact, I've got a whole list of gig apps that I'm going to be doing. Um, I have enough experience now with Amazon flex to say that one's a thumbs up. I'm liking Amazon flex. I'll get into some of the reasons here shortly. Um, I'm not going to, um, pass judgment on roadie yet because i got a video coming out on that but anybody saw our other video could probably guess <laughs> what my feelings are going to be on roadie but i'm gonna i'm gonna make it old fish right so that'll be Road coming kill. out in that video and then i've got several others that i've got um that i've been kind of uh sporadically testing spark i'm still fighting with trying to get logged in that's only taken me a month and a half so that's that's going now, spark well. is Spark is Walmart delivery. And the big problem for me with Spark is it begins at Walmart. Uh, yeah, because problem. it's my local Walmart. If I did that is a freaking nightmare. And 
I, I would quit on the first day. Yeah, well, I'm tougher than you are. I stick yeah. things out for the gram. So, but I'm still, hey, I'm still trying to get signed up. You know, it's only been a month and a half. So, um, honestly, if it wasn't for this testing, I, w- I would say, screw you, Walmart. I don't care. There's there's so many gigs out there. So many different ways to make oh, yeah. money. There's way, you know, find what you like and, and do, you know, multiple gigs because when some are slow, others are busy. Um, I've got uh, Deliver That. I'm trying to get a gig from, but so far my review is <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that because I can't even get a gig. I think the way they set it up is, uh, it, it's 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 actually stupider than Roadie, if you can believe that. No, I didn't think you'd find no. an app that the whole just the system and the way they set it up sucked more than Roadie, but Roadie's not the worst. Um, but yeah, so a lot of good things coming up as far as ride share is a big weekend. We had New Year's weekend, and yeah, I got to tell you, did you set different- up? You set a personal record, didn't you? Well, the difference between the day before New Year's uh, evening Eve and New Year's Eve was like the best of times, and it was the worst of times. I mean, <laughs> I I went from Friday night, the which was the night before Chris, uh, Christmas Eve, the night before New Year's Eve was horrible. I don't know. I don't. It wasn't one of my worst earning days. I made three hundred and sixty dollars that night. It was a Friday night, and most people would say, "Well, you know, what are you bitching about? That's that's a bad night." Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a bad night because I was in this car for twenty four fucking hours. <laughs> <laughs> now, now let me now, like literally, when I left at uh, like eight thirty in the morning on, I don't even remember now if it was Thursday morning or Friday. I can't. I, yeah, it was Friday. Friday morning, 8.30 in the morning. My wife was just waking up. I left. My kids weren't even awake yet. When I got home, they had already got up, had their whole day, went to bed, and then woke up again when I got home. So it was a legit 24 hours. And I actually, I should qualify that because we did work for a few hours. We shot a video uh, actually when I was sitting out here. Um, That last video that we shot, was the start of that horrible day. So I didn't know it was going to be bad until I, but remember I made that joke about, Oh, I did ride share this morning, but nobody got in the car. Right. Yeah. That was just foreshadowing (laughs) the rest of the day. I don't know what it was. Uh, The bars were busy. The restaurants were busy, but nobody was getting rides. And my wife was saying, well, maybe they're just like saving up for new year's Eve or something, but it was so slow that, about 2.30 in the morning, I, I only had, I think I was at, I don't know, $250 or something, which was, was fine. But again, it was so, I was out there so long, it wasn't that good. It was, it, it was at one point I was calculating 12 bucks an hour for mm. how long I'd been out there. So I snagged an Amazon block yeah. um, at 3.30 in the morning. So this would have been about 18 hours into my shift. And the way I, I'm very pig headed, right? So when I go out and I drive, I have a certain amount of money I want to make. And I was just very stubborn. I wasn't planning on staying out for 24 hours, but I just, I don't like to go home without a certain amount of money. Cause then I feel like I wasted my time. Mm-hmm. I know that doesn't make sense, but that's just the way it works. When I'm out, I'm like, I don't want to go home. Like one time I went home and <laughs> I was out. It was like the worst day ever. Remember a few weeks ago and I made like yeah. 40 bucks or 50 bucks and I was out like eight hours and I was just like, this just sucks to hell, you know? So anyway, I did that Amazon shift and then I went home and I made 360 bucks, but it was 24 hours. I went home. I went to bed. I slept for six hours. I got up. Now it's new year's day. And I hung out with the family just for a little bit. Uh, we celebrated the UK new year's cause that was at five o'clock our time. Mm-hmm. And then I wanted to get out and drive cause the bonuses were going crazy. And I was already still butt hurt from the night before. So then I went out from a 24 hour shift, six hours sleep, went out and I worked what I worked New Year's Eve, like 15, 16, 17 hours, something like that. Yeah. But I made eight hundred and fifty no eight hundred and sixty dollars the New Year's Eve night. Yeah, and so your I first w- ride, wasn't that like a hundred and forty bucks? Yeah, it was uh well it was a it was uh a hundred and Hundred and eight dollars, uh, Lux Black ride coming from the TCU game, um, and then uh, there was like a nine or ten dollar ride bonus in there on top of that, and then 
um, the, the, the guy was cool. The, uh, it, was a, it was a couple uh, in from New York and they gave me a $34 tip. So all added up to about $144 to start the night, yeah. you know, which was almost as much as I'd made, you know, a, on ride share the night before. So, so it, it was, it, it was, it was good. I mean, my previous best day was Halloween and it was five fifty. So I shattered that by $300. Mm-hmm. And honestly, if, if every night was New Year's Eve, I could oh, just quit wish, the consulting right? gig altogether. I would just right. drive, <laughs> pocket a thousand bucks a day, and call you know call it good. But no, it, it was good. Um, why is my car shutting off on me? Oh, uh, no, I have a couple more minutes of charge. But uh, you know, one thing I'm I'm liking is I'm I'm starting to work in Amazon blocks into my rideshare, mm-hmm. and one of the you know some of the reasons why I re- I'm really liking Amazon. Um, so Amazon. let's let's uh, let's just uh, qualify this for people. The program is actually called Amazon Flex. What do you call it? Prime. Uh, so, uh, you just called it Amazon. But if you're looking for this gig, oh. do a search for Amazon Flex, and that's how you can learn about how to. The application process is is really easy. You just got to watch a bunch of videos. But Damon, the big thing that you said to me this weekend was you really like Amazon because. It's a set amount of time. You know what the income is going to be, and you don't have any drunk people you have to deal with. Well, I, I tend to like Amazon when I have a bad day with Lyft or Uber, right? So I have a bad day, and I'm like, ah, Amazon is over here winking at me. I need to get over here. <laughs> and and so, yeah, the, I mean, with Uber and Lyft, you've got the ups and the downs. You've got the good days. You've got the bad days. You're, you're out there. You're waiting for a ride. And so here's what I'll say about Amazon Flex, like you said. It's for people that don't want to deal with people in their car, for people that want to know exactly how much money they're going to make before they even go out. So you can plan, okay, I'm going to go out. I'm going to spend X amount of time and I'm going to make this amount of money. Um, so there's, you know, you can plan for that. Uh, Amazon is a great gig. You can, it's, it's a good gig for hustlers too, because you're going to get that set amount of money, no matter how fast you get your routes done. So if you're a hustler and they're, estimating four hours or four and a half hours and you get Mm -hmm. you know in my area they pay 90 bucks typically around there for four and a half hours it it ranges usually between like 19 and 22 dollars an hour sometimes there's a little bit extra bonus in there Uh, but that's about what you're looking at if you hit the average that they assume it's going to be but for me i almost always get done faster than they estimate i'm going to get done Uh, a few Mm -hmm. times i've gotten done right about the time they estimated I've yet to actually go over the time. So I've either beat it or, or, or gotten to it. So if you beat it by an hour, obviously, instead of making 20 bucks an hour, you might be making 23, 24. Mm-hmm. And you start looking at driving regular Lyft and regular Uber, not in surge time. Well, if you can make 20, 20, 22, $23 doing Amazon without any of the hassle of ride share, all of a sudden now it starts to become attractive. So the way I look at it, when Uber and Lyft are busy and they're surging and they have bonuses, Amazon cannot compete on right. price per hour typically. And again, every location is different. I mean, if you're like in a smaller market, maybe Amazon actually will beat rideshare because you're, you're you know you don't have a lot of demand there. But if you're in a bigger city, at least out here in Phoenix, when Lyft and Uber is on, I can't beat it with Walmart, Walmart with Amazon Flex. But when Lyft and Uber are slow. Amazon Flex is right up there in there as far as, as pricing. So what I've been starting to use Amazon Flex for, like today I went out, um, I wanted to go out and, and try, this is what, Monday, uh, the day after New Year's, but still technically mm-hmm. a holiday, right? Yes. Um, and I, it was it was late at night, early morning, like 1, 2 a.m., and I knew the ride share was going to be winding down, and I didn't want to get in the car and drive out 2, 3, 4 a.m. and just be sitting in the parking lot waiting for ride share. So I was able to snag right. an Amazon block at like three forty five, And I kind of felt like that was my anchor, right? That was like, you know what? I'm going to go mm-hmm. out and drive because the, the, the fulfillment center is down where I drive anyway. So now that I have that block locked in, I know I'm going to make that $90 for that block. So now I can drive out right. and kind of take a little bit of a risk with the ride share, see if I can snag some rides, knowing that I'm not going to go home pissed off, empty handed, a couple, a real slow rideshare day, and then drive all the way home. I know I got that ninety block, ninety dollar block waiting for me. So it, it kind of gives you that balance where you can go out, know it's there, hit some rideshare on the way down to the fulfillment center, hit some rideshare on the way back, or 
It doesn't have to be rideshare. It could be anything else. It could be DoorDash. It could be Uber Eats. It could be whatever it is that you like. In fact, um, on the way down today, I snagged an $11 surge bonus from Uber, and I threw on my Uber Eats, and a guy wanted a burrito at like 2.30 in the morning, and they offered me 22 bucks to get the guy a burrito. And the the, the burrito (laughs) place was four miles from where I was at the time the order came in. And then the guy's apartment was a mile and a half from there. So five and a half miles for 22 bucks. Yes, please. I'll take that. (laughs) So I knocked out the $22 on the way to Amazon. And then I got my $90 block and I just finished that drove to the charger. And now we're doing this. So I don't know what my afternoon's going to look like, but I know I have some obligations at the house. So I was probably going to try to do a little bit of Lyft, a little bit of Uber. In fact, real quick, I can see it was real slow earlier. Um, I'm I'm always looking at like surge bonuses and streaks to kind of tell me if things are busy. Like right now, Uber or Lyft is not really showing any bonuses at all, which I hate to drive. And then Uber is also totally like blank. There's no bonus. No, that's not good. So I I don't like to drive when there's no bonuses because <laughs> right. make less. So I don't right. you know I, I look at it as well. Why would I want if you're not doing it full time? Don't drive when there's not surge when there's no bonus. Go do something else. If you're doing it full time, hey, then you got to kind of do it. But if you're not doing it full time, wait for the bonuses. Wait for the good time. Make hay while the sun is shining. Tell like right everyone. Now. Tell everyone your uh, nightmare. Shadow pickup pop. story from this weekend where you're stuck in the middle of the street and people are trying to figure out who to get in the car. Oh, that was my Uber X story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Chalk that one up onto my, my shitty day. Um, I did one Uber X that day uh, just to try to fill in for, for Lyft. And, you know, it was like 2 AM. I, you know, so it was drunk, drunk kids or young adults, you know, at the bar. So I, anyway, I, I go to pick them up. We had a fiasco with the pickup because they weren't at the actual rideshare spot because they were drunk. So they don't think straight. And I'm like, I call the guy and I'm like, I can see where they're at in the app. They're on a, a road that I can't get to because it's closed off. Cause they always close mm-hmm. it off because it's packed. There's a whole bunch of bars like bar row that they don't want the Ubers and everything going in there. Right. So there's a designated rideshare area. Most people know where it's at. And the pin for the Uber is <laughs> right there on the designated <laughs> rideshare. That so I'm sitting on the pin when I'm supposed to pick him up, but I can see the little guy is over two streets. So I call yeah. him. He's like, "Where are you?" And I'm like, "I'm where I'm supposed to be. You are not." And I was nice about it. Obviously, <laughs> I was like, "Hey, uh, do you see on the app? There's a pin. I need you to walk to that pin. It's on the other side of the building." And he's like, "Yeah, okay." So I'm waiting and waiting. And I wanted to knock this ride out in about 20 minutes, start to finish, because I had some other things that I was looking to do. And this was just filler. So I, clearly the guy's not moving. I can see his thing. So I call him back and I'm like, hey, look, I'm going to go all the way around and it, meet me over at, you know, I explain where to meet me. So I go over mm-hmm. there and I find the guy, but he's not getting in. His girlfriend or wife gets in. He's waiting for this group of friends over here. And there's drunk oh, people no. over here talking. <laughs> But I'm stuck in the middle of the street. There's no place to pull over. It's not yeah. a, like a busy street, but it's a street that goes by the bar that all the Ubers and everything. So I'm blocking traffic. I mean, they have to go around me in the other lane, but I got my flashers on and I'm standing there and the guy's just like waiting. And I'm like, in a, in a nice tone, I'm like, hey, I'm blocking traffic here. We need to go. Like, I can't just yeah. sit here. And so the girl gets back out. She's chit chatting with them. Like, come on, come on. Like, nobody gives a shit. Like, it's their <laughs> world and we're all just living in it. We'll just block traffic. No problem. Finish your yeah. conversation. No, no big deal. It's not like I, I'm, I'm not getting paid for this or anything, you know, and these people are all just waiting. And then um, they're talking to this whole group. So I said, Hey, you know, by the way, I can only take four. He looks at me. He's like, Oh, only four. I'm like, yeah, four. And then one guy walks up and he's like, um, he's like, well, we have, we have five. And I'm like, no, I can't take five. One, two, three, four. It's like, almost like once a night now I you get these people, <laughs> you know? And, and so he's like, okay. And then, so I'm like, but we have to go. So one more girl comes in. Now there's a guy and two girls. And now I'm like, all right, let's go. He's like, no, no, my friend's coming. So then a guy and another girl. Oh come. no. And I'm like, 
guys, I can only take four. And the guy looks at me, why? And I was just, now at this point, I'm getting annoyed. I'm like, because I only have four seatbelts. I can only take four. If we get in an accident, getting kicked off of Uber is the least of my problems at that point. Right, right. So there's a sober adult here. That's me. So it's my car and my decision. We're going to take four. We're going 12 miles. Like they're acting like, they're like, oh, you sure you can't take five? No, I can't. So finally they figure it out. They get in. We're driving away. The guy's still chirping about it. You know, he's not chirping at me, but he's talking to his friends. And, oh, I'm worried that we left him and he was sick and da 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 And I'm just like driving now. So then he calls the guy. The guy says, oh, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'll get another Uber, whatever. And then the guy's still chirping. And he says something like, um, this is like a mile down the road. He says, I still have, don't know why we just couldn't have taken him. It's ridiculous. So mm-hmm. I look at him. And it's like, and I go, do you need to get out of this car right now and walk back? <laughs> in the car, that was the first time I ever almost kicked somebody out of my car. Of all the rides I've done, it was the first time. Yeah. The car just went silent. It was like you could hear a <laughs> drop in there. And the girls were embarrassed, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. But it was, I mean, the guy was like, dude, you know. It's like the reason there are Uber drivers is because there has to be a sober adult. Because clearly drunk, dumb fucks can't make good decisions like let's put five people in the car that can only hold four so if we get in an accident and one of you idiots goes through my windshield guess who's getting in trouble guess yeah. who's potentially going to jail guess who's potentially getting their ass sued off not the drunk drunk bastard that's like well, it's fine it's really not it can be a big deal and what he made a comment like well it's very unlikely to happen i was like unlikely uh, or not it's my ass not yours bro right right Drunk bastard. Yeah, I mean, what are the what are the chances that you get into an unexpected accident and one of those drunk passengers says to the police officer, "I accept total responsibility, officer." Oh, one hundred percent. They'd absolutely do that. <laughs> and even if they did that, the officer would say, "Well, thank you, son, but you weren't the driver." Right. You weren't the responsible party here. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my so, God. yeah, that was that was that that nightmare story. But the next day, as part of my eight fifty, and honestly. It should have been $900, but I screwed it up and I missed a, a black ride in there that was like a mile away. I want to claim $900, but I, I missed it and I didn't get it. So I, I didn't get the full 900, but I would have. But I did make $50 to deliver a video game eight miles. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Well, that was a great way to end the night. So. Yeah. Damon, are there any comments that stand out that you've answered in the past few days? Um, oh, there was one I just answered this morning where the guy, it was on our video about lift tips, and I was yep. saying, um, uh, don't accept, dr- oh, I'm done charging, hold on. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So this is, this is probably the most silent that you'll ever hear, Damon, right now, where I can get a word in edgewise most of the time. But oh, those, he's back. Those per minute fees are a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Elon, Elon, you got to unplug that shit right away. I would move, but I mean, there's plenty of open stalls, so I'll move. If I have to. Uh, but yeah. no, there was a comment about the uh, the uh, video we did where I said one of the tips was don't it, you know it's you shouldn't take uh, passengers that are not paying for the ride, and mm-hmm. and because I mean most of the time they're they're fine, but. I just, I get I, I it. What? I get it. I mean, you've had some experiences where you don't know who the person is getting in the car. Yeah. You don't know who they are. And on average, they, and not, not everybody, I don't want to disparage everybody, but on average, they tend to uh, respect the, the vehicle less. They tend to be the ones eating in my car, getting mm-hmm. chips everywhere. Um, and also I have never once, not one time gotten a tip um, for, in that scenario. Yeah. Because the person riding with you doesn't is not even paying for it, right? Yeah, they have no control. So the question well, was, the question they was, give you how, cash, but yeah, but that's never happened. Right. Um, and I mean, if they're too cheap to pay for their own ride, they're probably not going to give me cash. But the question was, how do you decline a ride like that, right? And when when and the question was, and, and Lyft actually is fine with with that, and. Mm-hmm. The answer to that question is, well, unless Lyft has changed their policy since we first started a couple months ago, which may be possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, I remember the policy was Lyft is not okay with that. And what is supposed to happen is that rider is actually supposed to create their own profile 
somebody can pay for the ride for somebody else, but that rider is supposed to have their own profile. Mm -hmm. And what normally happens is you see it and you're looking at the person that pays. You're looking at their profile, their rating, and you're accepting the ride. Oh, it's a right. five star, da, 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 da. And then you get there and then you find out that the person getting in is not the person that booked it. Sometimes a person will be there because it's their friend and oh yeah, you're just taking. So the, the unfortunate part is in almost every case, the driver will not know that's the scenario until you get there and whoever's getting in your car and you're, you're assessing the situation. Um, in rare occasions, the person that books the ride might make a comment like that one guy. Um, was that my first night? I think it was my first week where remember that one where uh, a guy books the ride and he goes, this is for my girlfriend. So make yeah, sure yeah. you're straight home. <laughs> She doesn't like, want to get in the car, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and then I didn't even take her because she didn't want to get in the car. So so anyway, to, so the, I answered his question, and I said, well, unfortunately, there's no way to know ahead of time unless they make a comment about it. And and But it's it's your car, and it's your choice. So if, you know, that, that is the case, when you get there, you would just have to assert yourself and say, well, I'm sorry, I don't know who this person is. And I'm not comfortable with this ride, so you're gonna have to call a different Lyft or a different Uber. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's discretion. I mean, if you feel comfortable with it and you're okay, that's fine. I'm just telling you, probably not gonna get a tip. And if there's anything about that situation that makes you uncomfortable, neither you nor Lyft know who the fuck is in the back of your car. So <laughs> there's that. At that point, how's that any different than I picked up a hitchhiker? Yeah, I know that's not. Hey, I'm going to wish you a good day out there, and uh, I hope you crush it. I'm going to get back to sourcing. And this is Steve Rode from the Penny Stupid Project. Damon, I will see you later. And stay tuned. Got a video coming up on Roadie and a video coming up on an actual review with uh, Amazon and why I like it. Amazon Flex, as you said. But if you don't like people, or even if you do like people, Amazon Flex is worth checking out as either a primary or a side gig to your primary gig. All right, like, share, subscribe. See ya. Peace. All right, now we just got to have uh, 15 seconds of us talking and for the end of the video and looking at each other. You're you're uh <laughs> you're overmodulated up with that mic. I think you're you know, I know. It's not as good as your audio at home, that's for sure. I'm always overmodulated. It's just the way I am. <laughs> well.